Okay, Camel, are you here with somebody or are you on your own? Amy, is it? Nice to meet you, Amy. Is, is that your friend? Sure. Friend, excellent. Well, we're not going to embarrass you too much in front of your friend. <laughs> okay. By all means, do. Okay. <laughs> Camel, I've got to find out if you're a good person, so I'm going to ask you some questions. We're going to use a standard. Which, uh, it's like a Ten Commandments. and It is actually the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. Can you remember some of them? All right. Like, don't kill, don't, uh, don't steal, don't lie, and things like that. Cheat on your wife and things like that, right? Are you ready? You can do this. Yep. Hopefully, I'll go through sets four, not ten. Don't worry. How many lies have you told in your whole life? A thousand? That's probably a thousand times less than me. So well done, Camel. <laughs> what do you call a person who tells lies? A liar. a liar. Well done. It's nice and easy, right? It's going to be easy all the way through like this. Okay. Have you taken something? that doesn't belong to you ever, regardless of its value and when in the past. What do you call a person who does that? A stealer. A, stealer, a thief. Fantastic. All right. A thief. So far, two out of two. Not so good. Let's see if you're going to do better in the second two. You're going to embarrass him. It looks like it. Okay. We'll, we'll do hopefully one that you can, you can pass. Have you ever said, oh my G-O-D, that's commandment number three. Don't take God's name in vain. And you know, when you're angry or upset, instead of swearing, you use God's name in its place, say, oh my G-O-D or J-C, things like that. Have you ever done that? Almost every day. Almost every day. And that's called? Blasphemy. That's correct. That is blasphemy. And somebody's helping you out here. <laughs> We're going to do one last one. I'm going to guess that you're guilty of the next one. All right? I'm going to throw it out there because you're a bloke. And I think every bloke is guilty of the next one. <laughs> oh, you can assume your own nowadays, right? <laughs> Very good. Are you male? Yeah. Okay, as long as we can clarify that. Okay, so Jesus said, if you as much as look at a woman with lustful thoughts, you broke the seventh commandment, which says do not commit adultery, and that's committing it in your heart. Have you ever looked at a lady and you had lustful thoughts? Okay, well, have you looked at anyone and had lustful thoughts? Okay, so you're guilty of that one? Yeah. Camel, we're going to do a quick summary. And before we go any further, so that it doesn't look like I'm judging you, let me tell you a couple of things. Number one, I'm no better than you. Are we good with that? Yeah. And number two, I don't think anybody here is better than you. Are you good with that? I think more or less everybody's failed the test if they applied it to themselves. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Of course. Now, let's just say God exists and you appear before him on judgment day and he can see all things. Right? Everything is done in hiding, in secret, things in the dark, things that you think nobody knows, but he does. And he judged you by that standard and me, so that doesn't look like I'm kind of saying I'm better. Would you come out innocent or guilty of that standard? Would you have broken it? Innocent, guilty? Uh, in his eyes, probably. Oh, well, he's the judge, so it's got to be in his eyes, isn't it? It's not in my eyes, <laughs> okay? I'm not going to do a good judge because I'm guilty myself. Of course you have. Balance, good and bad. But only on that standard would you come out innocent or guilty without looking at the other things. Yeah, yeah, only on that, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, let me clarify that a little bit of that, Camel. If a criminal stole a car, joyriding destroyed it, right? And he appeared before a judge and he's guilty, he stole the car. And he says to the judge, look, I'm guilty, but hey, look at my good and my bad, right? I have helped a lot of old ladies cross the road. I've written books for orphanages, you know, people um, uh, who are in need. I've looked after them and things like that. The judge would say, it's all good. I'm really happy you've done those things, but you're guilty of this crime and you should pay for it. Would you agree with that? Of course, of course. And if God was no less than a normal judge, he couldn't overlook the crimes that we commit. At least we can agree with that, right? Camel, you've been very honest with me. Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience. I want to ask you this question. If God was fully just and fully righteous, what would he do with the person who's guilty? It's a little bit of a tough question, right? But you've got to be honest. He's going to go down, right? They're going to go down. Now, if that turned out to be true and that was you, right? And he said, you're going down. Would that concern you? An honest answer. So far, you've been very honest with me, right? A wholehearted, honest answer will be? Of course, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or Buddhist, right? If God was going to judge the criminal, he's in trouble, wouldn't he be? Okay, good. Well, so far, I got you into trouble, didn't I? 
you, you were in deep trouble and I condemned you and I don't want to do that. I've got some good news for you and this is my 30 second closure. Okay, are you ready for this camel? Because I'm ready for some good news, right? And I'm sure everybody here is the same. Camel, you and I are criminals because we broke God's standard and we're in trouble. If God gave us what we deserve, he has no choice. I don't think God is, wants to send us to hell. He just has no choice because we're criminals and he cannot overlook criminal activities, right? But here's the problem, Camel, he's also loving and he's also just. If he's loving and just, he's got to make sure that people pay for their criminal activities. And there's the dilemma. Does he let them go and overlook his justice? Or does he let them have justice and overlook his love? How does he do it? And this is the bit, Camel, that I want you to hear me out and I want to blow your mind, okay? This is how God reconciles both justice and mercy at the same time. He comes down himself. 2,000 years ago. Who am I talking about? That's right. Comes down 2,000 years ago and he willingly lays down his life. Believe you me, Camel, that was the whole message from start to finish. It is incredible. He says we're in trouble. You can't get out because he has to pass the sentence, but he pays for the fine himself, willingly lays it down, suffers horrendous death. He rose again on the third day and he defeats death and sin and hell altogether. And now when you appear before him on Judgment Day, Camel, this is the good news. Even though you're guilty, he paid for your fine and the judge would say, hey man, your fine has been paid for, you're let off. Kind of like somebody who's a criminal, let's go with the guy who stole the car and there's a hundred thousand pounds bail on his head and someone walks in and pays for it and the guy can go free. Does that make sense? Yeah. Camel, there are two things you've got to do to receive this gift. And if nothing else, I want you to hear me out with this one so that you can think about it later. You've got to say sorry. Like a criminal who doesn't say sorry and is not going to go off, is he? He's not going to let him go. That's called repentance in a Christian world. Do you understand that? You turn away from those things. You no longer do them. You change your mind, right? A change of mind, a change of attitude. And the second thing you've got to do is put your trust in the person who's going to bail you out. Who did that? Who bailed you out in this story? That's right, he came down and paid for the fine. You put your trust in him. Now, Camel, nowhere did I say you have to believe that he exists, did I? I said you've got to believe in what he's done for you. You put your confidence in what he's done, not in what you've done in yourself. This is my message. And I think it's really important, don't you think, Camel? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to be in trouble when we die, we want to get it right now because when we die, we're going to be dead for a long time, right? We're alive for a short time, but when we're dead, it's gone. So we want to get this right. Camel, if it makes sense, when would you consider it? Now, of course, that's what a sensible person would say. A sensible, logical, rational, healthy-minded person would say now, not tomorrow. Kind of like you go to a doctor and he says, hey man, you got cancer and you're going to die if you don't take this medicine. And he says, when would you like to take it? And they say, I'll take it now. Don't tease me, just give me this medicine. I want it, right? That's what I want you to do today. Is that okay? Now, Camel. We wanted to give you this five pounds if you turned out to be a good person. Now you're like me and the rest of us here, not really. Okay, well you try your best, but you're not a good person. You're not gonna make it, right? But I'm gonna give this to you anyway. You know why? Because it's a demonstration of what God has done for us. He's given us a gift we don't deserve. The Bible says, whilst we were sinners, whilst we were enemies of God, he came down and rescued us and died on the cross. We didn't ask for it, he did it because he loved us. And I'm going to do the same for you. I'm going to give this to you as a demonstration of his gift to us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, don't go away. I've got some more gifts. But before we continue, give this guy a big hand for being so brave. <laughs> Camel, I can't thank you enough for talking to me. I really appreciate that. And we'd love to talk to you some more before you go, because no doubt you've got plenty of questions. And I think that's fair. You should have questions and we want to give the answers. But first, take the medicine. Don't mess with the medicine. Take it. Now, let's have the gift. I've got some gifts for this guy in a nice little pack. You know why I'm giving you more gifts, Camel? Because when you become a Christian, God gives you more gifts. Not only does he rescue us from hell, he actually gives you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. He actually gives you all these wonderful things that we don't deserve. We were his enemies and he gives us all these wonderful things. And this is a demonstration of that so that you know how much God loves you and how much he wants to give you eternal life. Fair enough? Okay, let's have this nice pack and there's chocolate in here for you as well. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank Give you. us a hug, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's for you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you.